This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. A lot of us will drop anything to show up for our friends, but how well do we show up for ourselves? Visit betterhelp.com super and invest in being the best version of yourself. Hey, brother! Guys, I am pretty sure the entire Potter family, like from the very beginning, has had a curse placed upon them. A curse that has destined each family member to death. And it starts with the invisibility cloak and death himself. Hang on to your butts, guys. This one's wild. Okay, so we all know that Harry is dealt the absolute worst hand possible from a very early age. His parents are murdered, and he's left with the Dursleys, who were the absolute worst. Not to mention, you know, the Dark Lord marked him as his equal and is on a literal death-defying quest to uh, murder him at any cost. Normal kid stuff. This means Harry starts off his life living under the stairs and nearly neglected entirely, whilst his cousin of the same age is incessantly doted on. He has never told the truth about what really happened to his parents, who he is, or how he is mega important to an entire community of people slash the whole world. It is truly awful, but one of the questions I always get stuck on extends beyond Harry's bad luck to the greater bad luck of his entire family. We know James and Lily were both 21 years old when their lives were cut tragically short by Voldemort, which means, I'm just gonna say it, Lupin looks really bad for 33. Same for you, Snape. No excuses. I I've looked worse, believe me. For reference, I, right now, am 34. But with his parents dying at such a young age, it seems all too likely that some other family member besides Petunia should have been able to take him in, right? Like realistically, if Lily and James are only 21, he could have had grandparents or even great grandparents on either side of the family that could have taken him in, right? How is it that the only living family member he has left is his mom's evil sister, like how? I was the only one to see her for what she was. A freak. And that is the question we're gonna try and answer today. What happened to the rest of Harry's family and what is Petunia doing that she is somehow avoiding all of this bad luck? Well, I mean, she did have Dudley. I mean, that couldn't have been a fun day at the maternity board, but she seems happy about it, so. But Dudley's giant head aside, today we explain what happened to the rest of the Potters. Guys, before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, MeUndies. Imagine this, scented candles, soothing music, a warm but not hot cup of tea, and of course, super comfortable underwear. Every one of these things are a very important aspect of practicing self-care. But that last one should really not be overlooked, y'all, because a comfy pair of undies represents a kind of self-care that can carry you throughout the entire day. Personally, I didn't understand the impact a super duper comfy pair of undies could have on your entire outlook on life until I experienced them. And once you do, there's no going back. Sometimes it can feel challenging to take care of yourself in the way you deserve, which is why the Me Undies membership was designed to make your life easier. With free shipping and returns on every order, saving on virtually everything they make, exclusive sales, and early access to their newest stuff, it's the ultimate way to ensure you start off every day in total comfy bliss. Available in sizes XS to 4XL, with new prints dropping monthly, there's always something new to try. Get super soft undies, bralettes, or socks shipped right to your door and live a more comfortable life. And MeUndies has a great offer for our viewers. If you're a first-time purchaser, you get 15% off your order. Plus, for a limited time, if you sign up for their free-to-join MeUndies membership program, you can get 25% off your first membership item. Again, that's 25% off your first membership item or 15% off your first order altogether, plus a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Just head on over to MeUndies.com theories. Again, that's MeUndies.com theories. Link is in the description down below. All right, so let's start today's video off by building a family tree and then probably burning off pretty much all of the branches. Today's a fun day, isn't it? Okay, so assuming we're looking at this tree from the lens of when we first meet Harry, he's going to be at the bottom of it. He, of course, marries Ginny and they go on to have kids of their own and have a wonderful, prosperous life, but uh, we are not about that, at least not today. I mean, we're obviously very happy for you, Harry. I mean, way to go, pal. But today, we're talking about death. Anyway, Harry is at the bottom of our tree, and immediately above him are, of course, his parents, James and Lilstifer Potter. She, of course, went by Lily for short, but we like to use full names here. Lily, of course, also had one sister, Petunia, but if we're going to use full names, I like to call her Petunia. Actually, fun fact about the Petunia flower, they actually represent resentment and anger. So the symbolism is dead on, unlike Petunia, who is dead alive. 
James, on the other hand, is the only child of, and I'm not kidding here, Fleamont and Euphemia Potter. Yeah, I said Fleamont. Who, I kid you not, named their child James, one of the most uh, common male first names in the entire English-speaking world. Crossing back over, let's also examine the parents of Petunia and Lily. Although, uh, actually, what does Lily uh, mean? Ah, uh, yes. Death. Naturally. But their parents were, of course, both muggles by the names of Mr. and Mrs. Evans. I'm gonna level with you guys. We've actually never been told what Lily and Petunia's parents' names are, but I'm gonna take a stab at it based on some scientific research. For their dad, I'm going with Clay, which means one who is subject to death at any moment of their life. Seems about right. And for mom, we're going with Lorelai, because no matter how you spell it, uh, it means a woman who leads a man to death. And just look at old Clay and Lori Evans, living up to their namesakes. Well, sort of. Actually, all we really know about the deaths of Clay and Lori Evans is that they died typical muggle deaths. Nonetheless, I'm still gonna take a stab at what happened with a knife. Actually, that's the whole guess. Just to be like 100% crystal clear, we have no idea what happened with that. And really, that's all we know about the entirety of the Evans family. So let's pop back over to Fleamont and Euphemia to see if we can climb a little higher up the tree because uh, we totally can. Fleamont and Euphemia actually had James much later in life after they assumed they'd never be able to conceive, which is also why he ended up being so spoiled because he was like literally their little miracle baby. Well, that and because it's actually Fleamont who went on to quadruple the Potter family fortune by inventing, of all things, Sleek Easy's hair potion. Which means, as far as I'm concerned, Lockhart had it just like completely backwards. Like he says his dream is to like invent a line of hair care products, but Harry doesn't want to be like Lockhart. Lockhart obviously really just wants to be like Harry. Anyway though, Fleamont was the son of the lovely Henry Potter and spouse. History has not deemed her important enough to be named. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, a fun fact about Henry, though, he was known as Harry to his close acquaintances and is likely the namesake for Harry Potter himself. Henry also served on the Wismagot until 1921 and spoke out against the Minister of Magic at the time for not letting wizards assist the Muggles in World War I, which like low-key means that a Harry Potter could make an appearance in the Fantastic Beast movies, but full video by clicking. Short version though, imagine we're sitting there watching Secrets of Dumbledore, everything's calm, quiet, when all of a sudden, Harry Potter! Except you know, imagine it's Jude Law and like, less shouty. Anyway, moving further up the tree, next we have Henry's parents, Mr. Potter and Miss Fleamont, who really I only bring up to explain why someone was ever named Fleamont, but it was, it was, because, it was because of this woman's maiden name. But from there, we actually need to travel way back in time to the very start of the Potter family tree, and a man named Sorry, Linfrid. Linfrid of Stitch and Co. Linfrid of, and a man named Linfrid of, Lin, man? Linfrid. 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 To a man named Linfrid of Stitch and Co. Stinch Co. Stinch Co. Stint, Linfrid of Stinch Co. We got it? Now we mentioned earlier that good old Fleamont quadrupled the Potter family fortune, but where did the fortune come from originally? That would be Linfrid, who actually started the Potter family fortune in a very similar way by inventing different potions, notably Skelligro and the Pepper Up Potion, which causes steam to come out of your ears. But because he had so many unusual plants and was experimenting with them all the time, he was also known amongst his neighbors for pottering about in his garden. And that is literally the origin of the Potter surname. But here's where things start getting pretty interesting because Linfred had, Linford? Linfred. Man, Linfred had himself seven kids. Weasley style, am I right? And the eldest of his children, Hardwin Potter, married none other than Iolanthe Peveril. And Iolanthe is important because she is the granddaughter of the third brother, Ignotus Peveril, and the current owner of the Invisibility Cloak. And so began the long tradition of handing down the Invisibility Cloak to the eldest Potter child, generation after generation, until Harry himself ends up I'm invisible. But let's back up a sec because I'm sorry. Did Hardwin have six other siblings? Are you telling me that some 800 years ago, the Potter family had seven potential family lines in the water, all of which stood to create even more family lines? And yet by the year 1900, a solid zero of them have survived? Shouldn't Harry have like 9,000 cousins by this point? Like where, where are the other 8,999? How is Dudley the only one? Hey, big D. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing for James Potter's elderly parents to contract dragon pox and die, which is what happened to them, by the way. I'm not sure we mentioned that earlier. Then of course, like he and Lily are murdered, so 
there's that. But like the amount of misfortune that needs to have occurred here for Petunia to be the only option definitely raised some eyebrows in this office. And yet there is an almost obvious answer for why there is only ever one surviving line of the Potter family. No matter how many generations have multiple children, which could grow the family further and further. The invisibility cloak. Let's back up even further to the tale of the Deathly Hallows. According to legend, the original three brothers met death on a bridge and he crafted the Deathly Hallows for them. And although they seemed like quite powerful objects, it turned out that death was also quite sly and in the end had the last laugh, at least with the first two brothers. The first brother boasted of the power of the Elder Wand and as such was almost immediately murdered in his sleep and so, Death claimed the first brother. The second brother who had the resurrection stone was tortured by the knowledge that he could never truly be with the woman he loved, even though he could communicate with her. And ultimately he decided to take his own life. And so death claimed the second brother. Which means that despite giving the brothers the hallows, death obviously still wanted all three brothers dead. And yet, although he searched and searched, he could never find the third brother until in his old age, he finally took off the cloak of invisibility and greeted death as an old friend. But I'm starting to think that even though death greeted Ignotus like an old friend, he may have still had the last word. Ah, oh, Ignotus, old chum, you're such a laugh. Great work, truly a full life. I do have to tell you though, the rest of your family while I was searching for you, absolute chum, like they were doomed. I killed them all, got them right here. <laughs> but do you see what's happening? We know the first two Hallows excel at getting their owners killed, but there's a bit of a twist when it comes to the cloak. The owners themselves and maybe their direct family may be protected, but there is just as bloody a trail following the cloak as there is the Elder Wand or the Resurrection Stone. Death has essentially cursed the extended family of whoever owns the cloak. It is almost the only thing that explains how Ignotus could have spawned an entire lineage of people who, I mean, let's just face it, these people couldn't avoid death to save their lives. Wait, but what's crazy is how it continues to add up the further you look at it. Like, consider this, did James have the cloak when they got murdered? Nope, gave it to Dumbledore. He was findable. How about this? James is a pureblood, right? And what does Sirius tell us about all of the pureblooded families? If you're only going to let your sons and daughters marry purebloods, your choice is very limited. There are hardly any of us left. Molly and I are cousins by marriage and Arthur's something like my second cousin once removed. But there's no point looking for them on here. If ever a family was a bunch of blood traitors, it's the Weasleys. Yeah, they're all related somehow because they almost have to be. And yet, somehow the pure-blooded Potters are not related to anyone, which we know they weren't because if they were, Harry would have had anywhere better to go. I'll be in my bedroom, making no noise and pretending that I don't exist. To write you will. But so then how did Petunia survive? You might be wondering. Well, she's not magical. And in a weird way, that's actually what's protecting her from death. And if you're thinking, well, certainly there must have been other non-magical people and then no, there weren't. Because remember, the Potters are purebloods. This is the first time they haven't been. Great move by James, by the way, very progressive. But here's where things get really goosebumpy because this curse on the Potter family, I think could literally be the reason why Harry was ever the subject of the prophecy to begin with. Because like, what does evading Voldemort three times and being born at the end of July have to do with anything? Answer, nothing. They're just clues to point you to the right boy. Or Neville. Why is it always me? The real question is, why are those the clues at all? And the answer is that Voldemort is trying to defeat death. I mean, he says so himself. I who have gone further than anybody along the path that leads to immortality. You know my goal, to conquer death. So really, who better to beat him than the next descendant of the direct line that has been beating death for the last 1000 years? And then it really, really comes full circle because Harry ultimately dies anyway, but becomes master of death 
and returns. In fact, when Harry goes into the forest, he's wearing the invisibility cloak. And what does he do just before he dies? He drops it. He leaves it for good. I mean, he does go back and get it later after he returns, but he intends to die. As far as he's concerned, he left that thing there forever. He took it off. He was findable. But Harry does return, and in doing so, he's ultimately able to defeat Voldemort. But I also think he breaks this curse on his family, meaning that his own children have nothing to fear. They, too, can finally begin extending the Potter family tree. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like it if you haven't already. If you want to see how a Harry Potter could show up in Fantastic Beasts, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, Ben, I will see you in another life.